Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have an interesting Rob's rambling. Wanted to talk to you about what are the first five knives you would buy if your knives were stolen, lost, like let's say in a fire or a natural disaster or um, something horrific, right? Something like a tornado came through or hurricane if you lived close to the to the shore, you know, just some sort of natural disaster, major earthquake, wh wherever you're at, right? If there was some disaster or if uh, your house burned down, God forbid, right? Or apartment, wherever you live. Or if, uh, you know, somebody came in robbed and took everything. What are the first five knives you would buy? And I wanted to break this up into the first five knives that I would buy probably that would be more of like everyday carry but knives. And then there would be the first five knives that I would buy that'd be little higher end knives. Now, a couple of things, I'm gonna assume right now that I can get a hold of these, right? I have a few in my collection that I would never be able to replace, right? Because they are no longer being made and I don't think they will be made. But a few of these here, I think I could find or at least a variant of them, okay? So I'll go through that. So I'll start off with the first five more everyday carry. And everything for me is everyday carry, but some of them, you know, are everyday carry in the sense you have a fifth pocket knife, you know, and these are kind of carried in a more, uh, you know, uh, formal setting like church or work or something like that, or going out to dinner or on a date, right? So those are those kind of knives, but I'll start off with the more everyday around the house kind of work knives, all right? So the first one that I think that I would probably buy and, um, it would be the Wii Banter, all right? So that would be the first one that I've gotten by, and I would definitely buy it with the Unlock Composite Scales because this knife right here alone is just perfect. It is very readily available. It's super fidget friendly, especially with these scales. I will tell you that these scales make the world of difference. So you need to get the Unlock Composite Scales because the Wii Banter without these scales, just wasn't a great knife in my opinion. I didn't I didn't care for it. I actually had one and I sold it. And then when I saw these were coming out, man, it made a difference. So anyways, this, oops, gotta get your fingers out of the way. But this knife is so utilitarian, so comfortable, and it's and it's a great, you know, cost-effective knife, S35VN steel, if you didn't know that, which is great steel. You know, it's a it's a it's a good premium steel. It's not a super steel, but it's definitely a premium steel. So that would be one knife that I would get immediately, right, in my collection. The next one I'd probably get, and I know it's readily available, is going to be the uh, Ray Lacana Coquine. This is made in a co collaboration with a Caviezel that used to be Drop, and this is the Keen. This is the large version. They're actually coming out on the 23rd with a mini version. So I don't know, maybe I'd get the mini um, once I get to see that one, but this right here is just such a wonderful knife, and it's such a Ray Lacanico design. You you know, typical Ray Lacanico, his name on there, but it's just such clean, smooth aesthetics on this line. So functional. I mean, there's no jimping on here, but this flipper works beautifully. It grips perfectly. The angle, the curve on here, it's just so comfortable. Not even jimping up here, even though Lacanico is kind of etched in, but gives you a little traction. But really, it's not necessary. And the the action on this thing is so buttery smooth. And because it's a full flat grind, it's easy to flip. So this would be definitely something that I would use because I, I find myself I've been checking out a lot of cool knives lately and I haven't carried this as much but I you know every time I pick it up I really enjoy carrying this knife a lot so that would be one I think the next one that I would try to get is a favorite of mine something I've carried for a while now and I've really enjoyed this and, and I think it's an undervalued or uh, undervalued really great Wii knife this is the Sakshi, S-A-A-K-S-H-I, okay, Sakshi. And it has a traditional, what I would call flat, well, it's more of a drop point, I guess. It's a um, drop point kind of blade. Um, anyways, beautiful flat grind all the way up. It comes down, very thin edge. It's got a beautiful little fuller up there. And it's a, it is a liner lock officially, even though that's like a full, like a frame lock there inside, like a frame inset lock. I don't know what you want to call it. But this is titanium liners, titanium clip. JG10, something that I'd like to die, but you know, for the value that you get out of this knife and the fidget, fidgetability is just fantastic. Just works so beautifully, right? So this would be one of those, because I, I have found myself, you know, I still love carrying this knife. So much fun to carry. Just a great value, great user knife. The next one I'd probably get is gonna be the Spyderco Paramilitary 3. Now, uh, it would be a toss up between the PM1, PM2, the Para, the Para 3, or the paramilitary two, right? So this is the para three, and it's in the uh, the paramilitary kind of line of, of knives. Beautiful flat grind all the way up with a spidey hole. 
the co compression lock in the back. Now, this one has obviously the Arctic fats, uh, Arctic storm fat carbon scales, really, and it has the CME, the compression made easy, which is a little upgrade you can get to kind of make it work a little bit like a button lock. Really nice, right? And I, and I like the uh, the Spidey Hold. This is like one of those great users, just so functional for so many tools. Because I suspect, you know, if you lost everything, you're going to be unpacking boxes, breaking open things, and you want a really good work knife to cut a bunch of things with. This would definitely fit that bill. Definitely a really good user knife, right? And finally, the last one would probably be like a QSP Penguin. And especially if I can get a hold of the traditional pocket knives uh, variant right here, which I have. This is the um, traditional pocket knives. Um, um, exclusive that they have. And this is jigged titanium um, um, uh, scales. Um, and then it's also the, the, the grind here is an M390 blade. I don't know if you can see that, M390. So it's just a beautiful variant. Buttery smooth, just such a fun knife. I really enjoy it. It has a flipper. So it's a little bigger. You know, I would probably even get maybe the regular penguin and the mini penguin too. I, I have all three because I love those guys in my collection. But that would probably be the first five knives that I would probably get in my collection right there would be these guys. So, you know, we'd probably get these right here. The, this, this is kind of budget everyday use. I would feel comfortable using these right away. And these would probably be the first ones I get. This, with this being the first and that being the last, you know, this one I know I can get hold of. These would be, you know, availability and inventory and all that good stuff. But those would be the first five everyday kind of carry knives that I would get. After that, um, then if I, you know, insurance check came in, assuming that, you know, it's covered by insurance, what would be the next knives I'd get? Well, these are going to be more challenging because some of these may be in stock or not, but these would be the knives that I would want or something close to them, all right? The first one would probably be the Wii Knives Trogon. This is a Brian Brown design. I really, really enjoy this. My favorite Wii knife design right now. I really, really like this knife a lot. So much fun, super fidget friendly. Just a great knife. This is 20 CV blade steel. This is brawn anodized and milled. You can see all that milling on here. So it gives a great texture on this knife. Um, um, scales with a deep pocket carry clip, beautiful bronze hardware everywhere. And it is a frame lock, but works beautifully both left and right handed. So I have no issues working this one left handed. It's just beautiful knife. A lot of fun to, oops, hard to do when you're <laughs> trying not to hit the camera and all the good stuff, right? So anyways, but that would be the, probably the first one that I would probably want to get. The next one probably would be a TRM Adam. I think this would be a really great knife, and I've enjoyed this a lot. This is one of those great carry. I would probably get it with either the, like I have here, the red uh, red uh, fat carbon scales, or something, maybe the titanium scales, probably. One of those two, I would definitely want to get that. But again, this is 20 CV blade steel, super thin grind, great user, super sharp, works beautifully. This is on phosphor bronze washers, but it just works really nicely. It's just a great thin carry, but you know, it's got a plenty of room and you can choke up and really work this blade really nicely. And it's just a great user knife. This almost falls into my users that I had over there, but it's a little higher end. So it's a little nicer. After that, I probably want to get one of the, a Pena knife of some sort. Now, my favorite one right now is going to be this Alacran. And the Alacran, uh, I was able to get this directly from Javi Garcia, but it's not something that's in the stores just yet. Um, I love this, this knife. Just beautiful, beautiful design. It's a, a Javi Garcia and uh, Enrique Pena collab, right? It's one of the Pena's X series, as you can see that. And this is the Alacran M390 blade steel made by Rio, and that's the Javi Garcia logo. This is a carbon fiber inlay and titanium scales. The, the contour with a deep milled pocket carry clip, hidden screws, the hardware is really, really nice comfortable comfortable knife great jimping up there works really great and it's a fantastic front flipper as well so very easy to front flip or slow roll so you can slow roll that open if you wanted to just really nice knife altogether this is one of those nice carry knives and what have you just a great knife but something like that then after that i would probably try to hunt down if i could an emp by edc uh, type of knife the relative right now is my absolute favorite from from uh, every man's pocket EDC right now. This is just really a fantastic knife. Every which way it works, this is beautiful. I am supposed to have gotten in the Nimble X. I got one in that it's getting, I had to ship it back. There was a, I think a, 
you know, a QC issue, which happens, you know, and, and likely if anybody's going to have that issue, it would be me. Most likely my wife will tell you that every, nine out of 10 times, I'm the guy that finds that QC issue and it seems to be drawn to me, right? But I'm glad it would be me, someone that I could just work with them and get, get a replacement. And they're great. You reach out to them, they'll get another one shipped out. They're just fantastic folks. So thumbs up to those guys. Can't wait to get the one in because I've heard nothing but good things about it. And the other three uh, EMP EDC knives that I've had have all been fantastic. Really great quality stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. But there you go. Beautiful front flipper. This is just a great knife. I love this one for Fidget Factor in so many ways. It's just a fun, fun knife. But I'd want to get something like that, whether it's the Relative or the Nimble X, but definitely be the one of those one of those that I would hunt and look for. And after that, I would get something like this, the iMamba, one of my favorite premium knives. I really, really like this. This is uh, made in South Africa by the Arnold Bernard brothers and beautiful RWL 34 blade steel. Of course, my fingers are super, super dirty, so I'm gonna use my cleaner here real quick, get my fingerprints off. All right, so there you go. Beautiful high polished blade right there with RWL 34. Wonderful fuller, I love this fuller. It's really, really nice and a beautiful flipper. Just works really, really great. Frame lock is fantastic, and it has got uh, um, ceramic ball bearings in there, which is wonderful. Milled uh, um, uh, deep pocket carry clip. You can see hidden screw as well. These screws are just really unique, and so is this pivot. It's just fantastic. I think it's like a T. I want to say it's a T15. I think it is. I forget. I have a I have a torque for it, but works really great if you need to. Um, really smooth, buttery, buttery smooth. They make all sorts of variants of this. You can get it with like a mammoth tooth or rattlesnake kind of design, just beautiful, gorgeous. Makes it way more expensive. This is the less expensive one, I should say. So that would be probably the next five higher end knives or similar knives that I would get to replace uh, if the other ones were stolen. So those are my top five quick ones that I would get within budget realm to quickly carry. And then these would be the top five higher, nicer knives, or at least similar to these, right? I would look to replace these. I, these are ones that I really like in my collection and I wanna keep in my collection. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I mean, there's a lot of other great knives out there, but these would be the ones that I would probably lean toward. Now, I will tell you, if I couldn't get one of these, something that I would probably consider would be like a McNeese Mech 2. Now this is the auto, as you can see with the full hollow grind magna cut steel. I wouldn't mind a manual one, right? That would, I think that would be super awesome. Now this automatic is phenomenal, don't get me wrong. This is beautiful right here, all right? Now this is a uh, MX gear, uh, MXG gear. Um, um, it's actually a zero tolerance clip, but I use the uh, uh, McNeese screws on here and it did work well and it fits on there pretty nicely. So that worked really, really well, but um, I like this a lot. So probably something like that. If I couldn't get a hold of one or two of these knives, I would be super happy if I got one of these, right? I would try to hunt one of those down. And that would that would, you know, that would be nice. So anyways, those are my top five of immediate knives and top five of higher end knives. What are yours? If something like that happened, I mean just this is theoretical, we're just speculating here, it's kind of a rambling, what would I do, you know? God forbid anything like that anything like that should ever happen, but if it does, what would you do? What would be your top five knives? Kind of makes you kind of reevaluate. You know, for some of you guys, maybe it'd be a great opportunity to go buy five other knives that you've been wanting to get, and it would be none of these, right? Maybe it wouldn't even be something in your current collection. Now, the, the question's kind of a setup. What would you, what are the top five knives you would get first to replace what was in your collection, right? So I'm picking something that's in my collection. Um, but theoretically, you could get go outside of your collection, right? Um, I think I, some of these are very comfortable, favorite knives. I love carrying quite a bit, and I have carried, and I will carry again. I mean, I'm really enjoying the Penguins. I like all three of the variants that I have of this one. This is such a fun, great knife. I call this my nicest, inexpensive knife out there. It is the nicest, cheap knife, if you will. It's not cheap, but knife is inex nicest, inexpensive, knifest. <laughs> Wow, a nicest inexpensive knife out there. I think it's just a fantastic budget, really. Just a great budget buy in so many ways. But that would be something that I enjoy carrying and will continue to carry. So for you guys, you know, let me know. Let me know what are your thoughts out there. What are five knives you would immediately replace and maybe five knives in your higher end you would replace and are there other knives you would get? I mean, I guess if I was starting over, if I just to throw it out there theoretically, theoretically, 
if there are five knives not in my collection right now, and I, you know, I had a huge insurance check or whatever, and I could go out and replace some of them, I'd probably look at, like I said, I would look at the manual McNeese uh, 3.5 Mac 2. That would be one for sure. I would probably look for a Sheer Gorov. Probably, yeah. Um, uh, what else would I look for? I would probably also look for uh, what are some of my other knives in my collection that I think I would like? Uh, I think I actually have a list of Grail knives. Let's let's look at those real quick. Yeah, I would probably try to get a uh, Microtech MSI Ramlock, which seems to be next impossible to find. Maybe a Tactile Maverick. Uh, I would definitely try to get a Protech um, Protech uh, Mordax, and maybe a Rick, Rick Hinderer Maximus. Those would be some of the ones that I really like. Uh, I haven't really been attracted to much other ones. I, again, if I were to do the Sheer Goroff, I'd really want to handle it go to a store that had them uh, i'm not too keen on spending that much money and not first kind of feeling it like you know this right here is just fantastic but i want to be able to feel it in my hand all right so those would be some of the knives i probably would entertain if i was going to get something else but that's kind of where where i'm at all right, well, that, that's kind of my, my rambling here. It's a short one. Um, what about you guys? I would love to hear your comments. Anything you have down below, please feel free. Any questions you have, any ideas, suggestions for future ramblings or future things you'd like to see in reviews or unboxings, please let me know. I'm always trying to improve my content all the time because uh, I'm learning. I'm learning from you guys and I'm learning, you know, as I'm doing this. And to me, that's what makes this so much fun. I'm always learning. I, I, that's what I like about this. I'm learning about new ideas in knives, new designs, even the engineering behind it. You know, all those things, I find that really fascinating and fun. So, you know, that's what, that's kind of what uh, I think brings the community together. We get to talk about things that we enjoy and we love. So there you go. So I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear your comments. I do try to read every one of them, try to reply. And uh, hey, thanks so much for watching today. You know, if you like this video, if you enjoyed this, if this video was interesting, uh, informative, or provide any value to you at all, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? I really would appreciate that. And if you've hit that like button, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. That really helps out the channel, my, uh, my channel out a lot. Allows me to bring more content in the future. Allows us to grow and be able to do more. So if you would please maybe consider hitting that subscribe and like button, man, thank you. That would really be tremendous. And then if you've already hit the subscribe, subscribe button maybe you can go ahead and hit that uh, notification button so you can be notified of future content as it drops and if you've done all that maybe check me out over on instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives that's robs underscore nerdy underscore knives on instagram hey thanks so much for watching today i really appreciate it you guys have a great day and a great week bye